the transfer portal is just ablaze. Transfer portal's on fire. We got new names going in by the hour. And so I'm doing my best to keep up to speed here. I got Matt, I got Matt Zenitz over here, and I've just kind of got an open line of communication that I hope stays open. And um, it's a blessing to be able to just say, hey, what's this kid going to do? What's that kid going to do? Because uh, Zenitz doesn't have to sleep. He's more robotic than human. I like to get a few hours every night, and when I wake up, I need to know what happened. So 247sports.com, there's just like a, a rolling update right now of guys who are in. I'm looking at Texas A&M. That's a spotlight team right now. And we talk about spotlight teams every year in the portal season and in early signing day. And A&M with Mike Elko coming in is obviously that. Here's what I'm careful to do. Okay, I, I met with Jesse a little while ago, and I ran down the list of names I wanted to talk about. And every one of them, I'm always asking, are they in the portal or do we think they're expected to go in the portal? And I know that changes by the hour. So we got Walter Nolan, best we can tell, we think he's expected to go in the portal. LT Overton planning to enter the portal. A lot of times that's semantical, but people get really bent out of shape about it. So I want to be accurate on that. They're both five-star defensive linemen at AM. They were both in that very, very highly touted, top-rated recruiting class of all time a couple of cycles ago. Walter Nolan, if he's in the portal, He's the top-rated kid in the portal. He is immediate plug-and-play. There is not another Walter Nolan out there, but LT Overton not far behind him. And so either one of those guys, kind of like Bear Alexander last year, just immediate, high-level, five-star, plug-and-play, 6'4", 3'10", 315 defensive lineman bodies. And obviously, you know, you got even Evan Stewart out there at A&M too. A lot of speculation about whether he'll go in or whether he won't. Uh, also, if you're a guy like Evan Stewart, there is no need to rush that. A new coaching staff just came in, okay? You don't lose anything by waiting it out, feeling that coaching staff out. Let's see how things go. Because if you're an Evan Stewart, or for that matter, if you're Walter Nolan, if you're LT Overton, it doesn't matter when you go in. You're going to have landing spots all over the place. You are not one of the potential casualties that just get lost forever in the portal. You are a priority no matter when you go in. So I don't I don't sit here shocked just because some of these high-level guys don't immediately jump in the portal as soon as it's open. They get to operate a little bit differently than the 99% do. What about Kyle McCord? A lot of you were surprised yesterday. The starting quarterback at Ohio State went in the transfer portal. Number 20 player overall. Now that updates continuously as new kids go in. Sounds like there's some smoke with Nebraska right now. And I am not surprised necessarily because Nebraska's got to make a quarterback move regardless. Listen to this. These are paper popper stats for all the wrong reasons. Nebraska was 129th in pass yards per game this year. Here's a little Jeopardy music trivia question for you. I've got one, two, three. I got four teams and only four teams that were worse than Nebraska in pass yards per game this year. One of them is Air Force. Nuff said. One of them is Navy. One of them is Army. Okay, Nuff said. Nuff said. And the other one is Iowa, which for all intents and purposes was a service academy offense in their own right this year. They didn't serve Iowa fans, mind you, but they were a service academy offense in terms of numbers. Other than the three service academies and Iowa, there were no teams worse in pass yards per game this year than Nebraska. So yeah, Kyle McCord, if he were to land at Nebraska, would be a massive upgrade as would several of these kids, over what they have now. Speaking of a kid who would be an upgrade in many offenses, Aiden Childs is in the portal. He was a four-star quarterback, number 58 overall, actually, just in this last recruiting cycle. So he was a true freshman at Oregon State. Remember, if your head coach leaves, you get to transfer penalty-free. So this doesn't even count. He could transfer again after this year and then transfer again as a grad transfer down the road if you wanted to. That's getting way ahead of ourselves. Jonathan Smith was his head coach at Oregon State. Jonathan Smith goes to Michigan State. There is a crystal ball that has been put in by our own Brandon Huffman for Aiden Childs to go to Michigan State. And they got to have one. They've had three quarterbacks at Michigan State transfer out. So the cupboard is virtually bare there. They're going to make a move for a quarterback. I am... I'm hearing uh, some interesting things just about Jonathan Smith, and it's to be expected, settling into that job. Because when you settle into a job, you got to figure out the geography, both in terms of recruiting, 
but you've also got to figure out the landscape figuratively in terms of who your NIL power players are. What's the current structure? What is my ideal structure? How quickly can we get that off the ground? And then all the while, you're trying to hire a staff. You're trying to recruit your current class. You're trying to keep your kids on campus and not going into the portal. And you're trying to add kids from the portal. Can you imagine doing all that in the same 24-hour days that just normal people work normal jobs? But hey, it's okay because they get paid a lot of money, so all's well. Dylan Gabriel in the portal. This was not a surprise. I think publicly maybe it was. Oklahoma fans weren't shocked by this. There have been rumblings. Uh, maybe if you're just like a random Maryland fan and you don't pay attention to the Big 12 or now the SEC, maybe you didn't see this coming. Dylan Gabriel was the starting quarterback for Oklahoma this past year. Uh, put up good numbers. Nearly a 70% completion percentage guy. 30 touchdowns, 6 picks. And uh, had a big game against Texas. And so he's in the portal now, which means two things. Number one, it's Jackson Arnold season in Norman, Oklahoma. Nothing more need be said there. And number two, it looks like he's going to go to Oregon. I think there's a visit set up this weekend. Bo Nix is out right after he goes and fulfills his obligations as a Heisman Trophy finalist. He's, he's out. And um, strong betting favorite that Dylan Gabriel ends up in Eugene, Oregon. Now, where I don't know this kid's going to end up, this next kid is Brock Vandergriff. I don't know where Brock Vandergriff's going to end up. I've got some guesses. Early, uh, early crystal ball prediction momentum is Brock Vandergriff to Kentucky. But, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see the B-roll and you can pretty well guess, oh, that's a Georgia quarterback. If you're listening on podcasts, I just told you that's a Georgia quarterback. This is a, a good problem to have if you're Georgia. Carson Beck, at least as of this evening, the thinking around here is it's more likely than not he returns for another year in Athens. So if he does, that's great for Georgia. But even if he doesn't, you got Dylan Riola coming in. You got Puglisi in the next class. Now, that wouldn't necessarily impact Vandergriff a whole lot. But they just got too many good players up there. So this is a good problem to have. Um, he's going to move on. Brock Vandergriff, he's a retro sophomore right now, 6'3", 210. He was the number five quarterback a couple of cycles ago. Kentucky has a crystal ball in there for him. So let's just see now. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily view myself as being fully up to speed on his process, but Kentucky, I know, had an early crystal ball. Uh, Vandergriff could be a really good player. Carson Beck beat him out, but he could be a really good player. And as is usually the case in transfer portal season, it's like one of the only times we use the teleprompter. Because Jesse just typed in the teleprompter, Arkansas running back Rocket Sanders has entered the transfer portal. Jesse, he is in, right? Okay, so he is in the transfer portal. If you open the door, you will see Rocket Sanders in there right now. Remember, Bobby Petrino, new offensive coordinator there. Uh, we're, we're still waiting to hear about a lot of those guys up there. Rocket Sanders, that's going to be there, – there are, there are a lot of names – Rocket Sanders being one of them who's in the portal now. And there are some more names of running backs out there, pretty high profile, that could go in the portal. And there are some high profile teams. Georgia, since we just talked about them, it is, it is mandatory that they go at a difference maker at running back. And I think they will. And the guy they eventually add may or may not already be in the portal because it's just now open. So uh, you got to... You got to head on a swivel. You got to have that head on a swivel this time of year. 